More than four decades ago, a Nebraska rancher stumbled onto the world's largest known pair of typical whitetail antlers known to man, and here's a story. Throughout the early to mid-1900s, whitetail hunters and antler collectors frequently kept gigantic antlers in old, moth-eaten mounts in attics, basements, and other dark corners of their home. As a result, many of these great racks would remain in obscurity for decades. As stories of exceptional deer got out, a few pioneer antler collectors constantly chased down the rumors, driving all over the continent in search of great racks that had been lying around in barns and closets for years. Such giants did exist, and through the efforts of these collectors, some of the most iconic whitetails we know today are from their endeavors. There's nothing that that compares. He, everything hails in comparison, and really they should have named him the president or uh, something like that because general was is not the highest ranking, I guess, is it? So, And he definitely is. That's the greatest whitetail. In the mid-1990s, an outfitter based out of Oklahoma named Tim Connick was looking to expand his operation into the Cornhusker state. Nebraska has long been overlooked in the conversation of big buck states, but a small human population, few outfitters, and plenty of big bucks made sense for the expansion into Nebraska. Tim would always be prospecting and talking to ranchers in the area about leasing land for hunting. He'd often ask qualifying questions to understand what kind of bucks would be running around throughout the state. One time when he asked a rancher if he had any big racks or shed antlers lying around, the rancher said, no, but the neighbor across the way has a set you aren't going to believe. I've seen the big bucks in Cabela stores and they ain't got nothing like this one. The setting was a typical of central Nebraska, a modest farmhouse sitting amid many other outbuildings with various livestock scattered about. Tim was invited inside the house by the landowner who then led him through several rooms to where the sheds supposedly were. According to Idol, this is how the interaction went. As the rancher passed through a low arch entryway, he said, there he is. Tim looked at every wall but saw no antlers. He was beginning to feel a bit foolish for having pursued such a crazy rumor. But then he finally realized that the object of his quest was directly above his head. As I looked up under those massive 32 plus inch main beams, my jaw dropped and my teeth fell out on the floor. Tim recalls in what is probably only a mild exaggeration. After I jacked my jaw back up and put my teeth in, I said, nice buck. That led Tim to the set of sheds that would become known as the General the largest typical sheds of all time. Details of the transaction which caused those antlers to leave the farmhouse for the first time in 37 years are not known, but the gigantic buck would finally become known to serious whitetail nuts across the globe. Now let's talk about the antlers. He's got 33 inch matching beams. He is the biggest whitetail ever known to walk the planet. He's, it's a set of sheds found from Nebraska, but when you give the inside spread, and had he had no inside spread, he still would almost beat the world record with no spread. But with the spread in that 240 area, and with side to side differences, and the abnormal brow time, the deer will net in the mid 220s. He's got seven and a half inch mass through his beams. His G3 on the left side's over 14, and it really is just the most beautiful whitetail that I know of. But the shrinking effects of a warm, dry Nebraska farmhouse have taken a toll. No one, of course, knows exactly how much, but many antler collectors have some estimates. Antler collector Dick Idol said about the buck, it's hardly fair to compare such a rack to a recently harvested one kept indoors from the time of skinning for the short 60-day drying period and then officially measured for the record book. Just in shrinkage alone, these Nebraska sheds could have easily lost as much as six to eight inches in total measurement, especially in this type of rack, which still has 32 plus inch main beams and a conservative inside spread of nearly 24 inches. Another eight to 10 inches overall, which this buck conceivably lost, would have put him around 226 to 228, had the antlers been measured soon after being found back in 1959, according to Dick Idle. Tim says he feels honored to have discovered the highest scoring typical buck ever known to existence. And get this, the deer was wearing that set of antlers the year Tim was born. Was it fate? 